Hi everyone, it's your friend Doris the Coder back with another video and today's video is for the billers. Um, those of you considering having a billing company now, let me just get myself together here because apparently I'm not and I thought I was. Um, so the uh, motivation from this video came from a forum that I'm on the um, on Facebook. Um, the medical billing and coding forum where someone posted, you know, please help. I'm devastated. You know, I set up a new billing company with three new contracts. I've billed out over $3,300,000 with no payments. My question is, can I ditch the company and clearing house that isn't working so I can build the companies directly? I'm seriously desperate and about to lose everything. Thanks for any guidance. guidance. So I really wanted to do this video because I understand the appeal in the industry of healthcare uh, administration when it comes to billing and coding. What often draws us to this industry and folks to this industry is the, the appeal of being able to work for yourself. The, you know, as a mom, I, I love the idea of being able to work from home, um, especially coming up, uh, you know, my daughter's older now, but when she was a little one, I wanted to be able to see her off to school and I wanted to be able to um, be home when, you know, and see her once she came home from school. And I wanted to be able to work in between that. So I get the appeal that draws people to this industry. But the, the query here on the Medical Billing and Coding Forum uh, has a few kind of flags. And, and I pray for this person. My feedback to them was, I really hope you don't come out of this uh, unscathed. It was not just that. Um, it was more elusive than that, but that she doesn't come out of this. Um, I hope she comes out of this unscathed, but she should prepare for liability insurance in case she doesn't. Hopefully she had that because this could be a pretty serious breach of contract. Um, so I wanted to talk about those of you who might consider having a billing company in my former life. That is something I did. Um, you are looking at my whole billing staff for most, for the most part. I did have a couple people that may come in intermittently to help me do some contract work. Um, but largely I was often the only person doing uh, billing. Now with clients, I might pop in and do some fixes in their billing or some claims projects, but I don't do the whole billing uh, thing anymore. However, I've, I've learned a couple things that I want to be able to help you with and hopefully so you don't end up like this case. Um, first, you've got to understand that you must invest both time and money when you are doing thinking of having a billing company. Again, because you are not uh, free of risk in this area. Uh, it is not uncommon for an organization that's a billing company to end up on the OIG's work list. So you want to make sure, let's start with the money. One, having a billing company and effective and being effective with this is not as simple as you signing a contract with a provider, buying a billing system and starting billing. Um, Often there's a, a, an intermediary there called a clearinghouse. There are some payers, for example, Medicare requires you to submit claims electronically. Why would they require that? Some organizations, they do that because there is a cost associated with getting the claim in the system. And if a claim comes on paper, um, it has to be um, turned into an electronic version of that claim and process. That means it takes a person to do it or a system to do it. And it's a higher expense. So this is why, like we have HIPAA, you've got to submit those claims to, uh, like Medicare, you got to use it electronically. How many other payers that goes to will depend on the mix in your client's uh, system. So your intermediary, your clearinghouse is the entity that is that's where the claim goes after it leaves the billing company or their practice, but before it gets to the payer. They are the one to forward it there. So what you don't want to do, uh, like this, this lady actually did upon query I found, she actually simultaneously got the contract, the practice management system, and the clearinghouse contract. Now she's just wanting to build the companies directly. This speaks to, I think, inexperience in this area because you can't just bill directly. Some of the reasons they probably did not pass the clearinghouse is because they don't know who she is, meaning they don't have to know her personally. But before you can bill for a provider and submit claims on, the, on that provider's behalf, bear in mind that provider has responsibility for the claim submitted in their name. So part of the reason they can hold a provider responsible for that is a provider has to authorize in the form of documentation and a process to allow an agency to submit claims on their behalf. This is why you can't jump in and just rescue a practice. From a billing standpoint, there is a lag time. There's 
a period of time before you can even start before you can get a claim out. Now, if it's workers' comp and it's something that goes on paper, you might be able to drop those claims to paper just because a lot of workers' comp, you can't bill electronically anyway. Um, so you're on paper and, and that's harder to track, but you can get something done. But when you're dealing with like HIPAA-covered entities, you do really run into that, uh, a problem where you're not able to do that until that paperwork is done. So the first kind of investment you wanna make money-wise is you've gotta get the practice management system. Couple that with time. So when you get the practice management system, hopefully you're, you're, you're buying one that you're familiar with, but the level of familiarity is different. If you've worked as a biller in a company with that practice management system, you worked with a system that was already set up and done and ready to go. It is different when you are a billing company and you have to set a system up to get it ready to go. So after you buy that system, part of that investment is also going to be um, a time investment that requires you to one, get familiar with the total part of it. How do I use the system for what I'm using it to do? Because I'm going beyond just charge posting or billing. I have to set up and add the providers, the locations, the codes, the demographic information, the licensure information based on the service that I'm doing, I've got to get all of that into the system kind of upfront. If I've worked as a bill in an office, I probably never had to do that input that stuff because that was already done. Um, so you have to, uh, you may have to also pay for additional training. Some of these practice management systems give you some training. I can tell you one, there's a big one that they're pretty big, but wow, the system's not great for reporting or anything. And the IT is really not very helpful. It's remote. It's not on site. It's a bit of a challenge. Um, so it may be an additional financial investment for you to learn how to maximize that system for the purpose that you're looking to accomplish there. Um, you also want to find out, and that might be like, hey, I want to do certain reports, right? Maybe you have to pay an additional fee because they don't have a report canned that you're looking to uh, have, and you may have to pay a cost to have them custom build a report so you can monitor whatever you're looking to monitor or manage in that regard. You're also going to have a financial fee associated with establishing the clearinghouse. So once you have the clearinghouse, there are fees per claim, there are setup fees and things that you have to pay, and that is your contract between you and the clearinghouse. The provider is the person you're billing for, but you have an ultimate responsibility to the clearinghouse. They don't bill the provider for that. Um, they bill you directly for that, and you're responsible. So that's something you want to be prepared for as well. What does that cost look like? Um, when I warn providers about billing companies, I tell providers, you've got to make sure you include some timelines on billing in your contract. Because, you know, when I worked in, um, when I had a billing company, I would bill for providers, but the clearinghouses charged a claim per claim fee. Um, that per claim fee goes down based on the number of claims you submit in a day. So a billing company that has a system with all of their different clients on it, they may, to get a lower amount and reduce their costs, submit their bills at one time, right? Post the charges and don't submit those batches until one time so they can get the lower cost, right? That's something, again, you want to go ahead and think about when um, you're making the money investment. You're also going to need IT. You're going to need any IT because there's some privacy considerations. Um, uh, you're going to potentially have to share sensitive information back and forth between your practice. So something like one of the systems I use is like ShareFile. Um, they have uh, drop programs. As long as it is encrypted and has the right level of security, that's something to think about. So if you have to email the practice, like I don't want, I'm not emailing my patient note to you at your Gmail account and address. There has to be a secure method for me to submit that information because then the provider has risk in how you use that. So is that something you thought about, right? Um, when dealing with PHI, um, we talked about those setup fees. I would say a website as well, right? That's a marketing thing, but you look more uh, official, if you have a website as opposed to now, if you're a billing, you're offering a billing service as opposed to a billing company, that's a little bit different. Um, but you want to have a footprint because what if you do really very well and the provider brags on you? They may want to be able to give someone your website information to uh, help you market. And one of one of the most uh, important investments is legal. It's probably the one that's going to take a big bite out of your pocket. But you have to think forward when you have a billing company. What if your client doesn't pay you? 
What if your client short pays you? What if your client runs into a liability issue with regard to claim submission? What if your client has to pay back money, right? Um, those are some things you want to think about. Um, and what if you have to sue your client? Are you going to their state or are they coming to yours? It's important for you to have uh, an attorney involved so you can think about what your wishes, what your, cons your concerns are, and so they can help you write a valid billing contract because you might be able to get a provider to sign whatever kind of document you've typed up. But it, if that contract isn't legal, like it doesn't legally stand, the provider may not know that and it may not be into a point where it becomes contested that I you find out it's this term I learned in legal unconscionable. It's extremely one-sided and thus not doesn't hold up in court. Now you've done all this work and you don't get paid for it because you had a really one-sided term uh, contract. What might make it unconscionable is if when I say one-sided, it's leaning towards one person. So I can bill whenever I want. You know, there's no real responsibility for me, but you've got to pay me. That could be something that's somewhat un unconscionable. Um, before you kind of get to the point with the money investment, you do want to make sure you have a, the, well, you know, maybe kind of simultaneously, but something to think about the time investment. Right. So it is going to take you time to get the practice management system. It's going to take you time to train on, train on that practice management system, which I would I would factor even if I had experience with it, because depending on your view with that experience or what task you've done in that system, you may need extensively more training and time with it to be a manager, right, a billing company. Um, as opposed to having been a biller that worked on it. So uh, time to set your provider, uh, time to get to know your system as well as reporting, how you can track and deliver your data, how you can maximally use that system to serve your, your client well and deliver the kind of information that's valuable to them and makes you valuable to them. Um, another thing to think about uh, legal with, you know, if the contract ends, I forgot about that. How will you get the information back to the client? How do you make sure it's secured? How will you protect it? IT, who's going to back me up? How am I going to back this data up? How do I ensure that's secured? Those are other money investments I forgot to mention. Um, once the training is set up, right? Training, how do I use the system? How do I report on the system? These are all things that are going to take you time when you're coming from a perspective of a billing company. Um, what time do I want to allocate to training the group or the client that I'm billing for? You need to have time for that because how do you get the information that you're going to bill, right? How, how, what process do you want to be followed? What do you need before it even gets to you? I would give my client a, like a checklist. Every claim has to have this, right? So what does that look like? Is the staff who's going to be responsible for executing that or the department, do you have something memorialized on what's needed? So if the person sitting in the seat today leaves and a new person steps into the seat, you've not had a, virtu a bunch of virtual conversations that's going to result in a bunch of claim issues later because that there was nothing written. So spending time to have a clean, develop a clean process for communication with your practice is going to be important. <laughs> Setting up your information. So after you set up the information in the practice management system, you might also have to set up the information in the clearinghouse, right? Um, and do that setup for you. Some of them will actually help you with that, but don't think there's nothing at all you have to do in that regard as well. That too is going to take you time. Um, confirming everything. So once I get all of that stuff, those things set up, I confirm that everything's working. Maybe I send some test claims. What may also be helpful is you might need uh, auxiliary services to billing or like uh, credentialing or contracting and enrollment. You might have to do that and have you factor that into your fee for a, maybe a setup fee for billing, knowing that these things are going to take you uh, a minute before you go. Um, do you have, and this is where the attorney is helpful. Do you have a team? Are you just a person doing billing, which is fine. I know a lot of people who are independent people doing billing. They pull people in this contract. That's actually, that's great, right? That works out for you. But knowing that there are some timelines that you may have to stick, stick to if you're, especially if you're a solo person doing billing, what happens if you get sick? What happens if you take a vacation? Uh, what happens if something happens where you're not able to get the work done? The fact that you had a reason to breach the contract doesn't necessarily um, relieve you of the responsibility for breaching a contract. 
So if there's some timeline considerations that are in your contract, which I recommend every provider put in it, like that's just a good thing to do. Um, what does that mean for you? So uh, this person, you don't want to end up in something like that. Do not simultaneously familiarize yourself with a system and get a client. There is always going to be a learning curve and the IT support is not great um, with some of these companies. Many of them are offshore and you can't get someone on the phone to help you or someone in your office to really shoot, shoot it out. You might be chatting with someone online and trying to get it done. Um, if you want to set yourself up as a billing company and you kind of want to do it the right way, I recommend you go to the OIG's uh, compliance guidance. They do have one here for third-party billing suppliers. Uh, the reason I can't find it is beyond me because I was just on the page. Um, yeah, for third-party medical billing companies, uh, you definitely want to have liability insurance. Again, that's another investment. Have you thought about that? Um, to err is human and we are human, thus we err. So what does that mean if you make a mistake that costs a client a great deal of money, right? It was error. It was a mistake. You certainly didn't do it on purpose, but you're going to have responsibility all the same, right? So you want to ensure there's some coverage for you. And that's where legal is important because it also will be clear on what is covered, Right. For example, I take zero responsibility for a provider's coding, even though I'm a coder. I take zero responsibility for their coding if I'm not coding their records right in the contract. So if the rubber meets the road and there has to be accountability, my scope of services are very clear. If I don't look at documentation and your super bill is my source document and that's how I bill, you have a responsibility on the provide. My line is drawn there. You have a responsibility to document the service and code it. I have a responsibility to prepare the claim and follow up. So the scope of responsibility in a billing company could be different. Maybe you do billing and coding. That means you share in the risk. That also means when you're writing out the contract, there needs to be some expectations. Like if a provider wants you to code something, but it isn't sufficiently documented, you need to kind of have that clearly memorialized in your contract. So um, hopefully this does not become a painful lesson for this. I tell you what, I don't think this person will ever make such a mistake again. This one um, might have some risk for her. I hope it doesn't have any risk for you because you take the tips that I've given you in this video. Um, uh, this is the OIG site. So you could, I, it's a great source of information, whether you're coding and billing for a practice or you're a coder or you have a billing company like this person, this is a really great place to look to just make sure you are clear, you're comfortable and you're confident in what you're doing. So until the next video, I'm Doris the Coder and I'll see you then.